I am in my beloved local park in the midst of an alien invasion, one of epic proportions. Look, look at these few innocent sticks in the fall, but in the spring, broom is deep green and covered in bright yellow flowers. It is truly a concern because it is able to outcompete with the indigenous plants, such as the ones behind me. It takes over space and it holds valuable seed until it finds the opportune moment to germinate. Broom can actually replace the natural forests. Now, Broom came here in a very interesting way. It was introduced to Vancouver Island not so long ago in the 1850s by Captain Walter Grant, who planted it on his farm near Souk. He thought it was beautiful. It reminded him of home. It was thought to be winter feed for horses. As it turns out, it is a poisonous plant and a colonizer. Our Gospels reach across the ages to share that people asked Jesus what he knew about the kingdom come. Those who gathered around Jesus were seeking a vision to dream about. Jesus shared this parable. It's like a mustard seed when sown upon the ground. It is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and it becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so birds of the air can make nests in its shade. Helpful? Not so much. Any farmer in Jesus' audience would have been puzzled at this simplistic story as everyone would have had some rudimentary understanding of how to grow crops. And most folks would know that you would never, 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 never sow mustard seeds on purpose as it grows all too readily on its own. And once it appears, it takes over the field. If you were listening to this story and worked the land, you would have been shaking your head in disbelief as the kingdom, the realm of God, and the mustard plant, weeds, they simply don't belong in the same sentence. Now true, mustard is an herb which has some medicinal properties. The mother of my grandfather shared that she would make a mustard plaster to cure just well just about everything my grandfather shared with me once that he was afraid to sneeze in her presence because if he did my great-grandmother would have a mustard plaster on him so fast it would make his head spin he said they were so intense they would burn his skin mustard is an excellent preservative of food and food is essential to life and it is excellent on my hot dogs. It's an excellent condiment. But those that would have been gathered around Jesus that day, well, they would have been looking for words that would comfort and inspire. Instead, Jesus was comparing the world of which we and God dream of to a garden pest, mustard reborn. This parable does give us one positive image to consider. The shrub makes space for birds that can find shelter under its branches. This is the one image that lifts this parable from garden satire to a vision of the kingdom. Imagine a reality of God that embraces the whole world, even when it's a bit windy. This envisions God realm as a life-giving energy, good news for all of creation. This parable still works with us as we create space to engage the possibilities and the inconsistencies that we distinguish between a world where everything is planted and planned, linear, linear and logical, 
to one that is filled with mysteries and surprises into which God invites us to engage. Interesting, a glamour of the world God dreams of can start with a simple set of kindnesses and wonder of it all. And in this time and place, we rest in a mystery of what is. Now consider the broom seeds, if you can, or the mustard seeds. They get stuck in the mud and then in the tread of tires, especially of heavy off-road vehicles, like the one my son drives. He loves to go off-roading and so accidentally distributes broom throughout our highway network. And the birds, birds, well, when they consume seeds, they can seldom crack them all when they eat them, so they carry fertile seeds far and wide. And this accounts for the occurrences of spot growths of broom in isolated areas where even big vehicles cannot reach. Now recall if you can, if you've ever received a gift from a child, such as a homemade picture like this one drawn by my friend, friend Hudson, or received a leaf or a rock like this one I received from Shelby. A simple act, a small seed. Recall when you took time to listen, and I mean really listen to your neighbor, especially now when many of us are, are hanging on just by the tiniest, tiniest of threads. A simple act, a dream shared of hope and peace. Now look, I'm doing that parable thing where stories are more than stories, truths are more than truths, where connections are made and the mystery is revealed. From receiving the tiniest of gifts of seeing and noticing and listening sprout awakenings, new understandings, and then there is more empathy, more compassion, and more kindness such as the way of the kingdom of God in this complex and messy world. So I'll end this time with a prayer. Dear God, we may not be ready or understand the kingdom, but bring it anyways, because it's what we need, even if we don't know it or want it. Amen, amen, and 